We're going to demonstrate refraction here, in, including a demonstration of total internal reflection. If I take this laser and shine it at this uh, piece of plexiglass that's housing some, some water, you can see that the, I get a, the, here's the point where the laser beam hits the plexiglass. There's a reflected beam that comes over to here with angle of incidence equal angle of reflection. And then there's a refracted beam. And you can see that, it's a little hard, well, you, you can't really see the incident laser beam here, but the, the, the beam bends when it enters the water. The water has a higher index of refraction than the air, and so the ray bends toward the normal direction, the normal direction being the perpendicular direction to the plane of the interface. And this is the plane of the interface, so the normal direction is this direction in here. And this beam is bent toward the normal direction. Then you can also see, after the, the beam enters the water, a reflection from the surface of the water, right here. And then from the mirror on the bottom, etc., and multiple reflections. If the angle is steep enough, then here's a steep angle of incidence. Then this beam that I'm pointing to with my left finger represents the refracted ray when the laser beam hits the water-air interface here. So now I'm talking about this horizontal interface, and I'll be focusing on that for a little while uh, in order to understand total internal reflection. So the incident beam is this one here. The reflected beam is this one coming down here, coming off, reflected off of the water-air interface. And then there's a refracted beam, the one that goes through the interface, and that's this one. So let me move this over a little bit, maybe a little bit more clear. Okay. This refracted beam is the one that uh, makes it through the interface and, and comes through here. Now, as I narrow the angle, lower the angle, then this refracted beam comes closer and closer to being parallel to the interface. And when I reach what's known as the critical angle for total internal reflection, that beam is horizontal. And if I go beyond that, then the beam completely, the refracted beam completely disappears. So I no longer get any light above the water surface. All of the light is confined to the, the region with the water. And this is called the phenomenon of total internal reflection. And as you can see now, uh, this reflected beam here that's reflected off of that interface is pretty much as bright as the incident beam on the interface, and, um, and it just carries all of that energy and it conti continues to uh, bounce. So if we do this in reverse, actually before I do it in reverse, I note that this interface here is horizontal. The normal to the interface, meaning the perpendicular direction, is this direction, perpendicular to the water surface. And the angle that we're measuring, the incident angle, is the angle between that normal direction and the beam itself. If we lower that angle, make it smaller by doing this, then the refracted beam yet again, yet again reappears. Now, if we go, looking at this one, we've got a refracted beam. We still have a reflected beam, and I'm thinking we can see this. This beam right, so here's the incident beam, and here's the reflected beam coming right down there. And, um, and that reflected beam gets, gets more and more prominent as I, as I move toward that critical angle. And then once I hit the angle, then that beam becomes very prominent. 
So that's total internal reflection, and um, thanks very much.